Hey, how's it going? Um, I want to do a little follow-up video on video I posted last night about um, how I'm using the laser to kind of calculate where I need to cut everything for the floor to raise it up. So uh, there's my laser. Um, this is a hole in the ground that was already there from the HVLC, uh, HVAC guys. Um, this is actually where they cut to be able to put in a furnace a long time ago. So uh, I have an area for the laser to sit under the floor. Um, you'll find that, you know, this is just a regular Bosch GLL 2-20 professional laser or whatever that means. Um, there's really no lasers that shoot upside down that I've seen. Uh, so you're gonna have to cut a hole and put the physical laser under the grade that you want to shoot. Um, just kind of the way it goes. So I want to show you how I kind of did the math here, which doesn't involve any actual math, I promise. Um, there is the top of the floor, and we're going to go to the other side of the room, and I'll show you where it, all you do is just match where you want the floor to be, uh, where you think level is in your house. Uh, I guess if you were, you know, doing an entire house, you'd obviously start with the part that's the highest. So that has to be the top of the floor. Um, then, you know, this is a piece of the actual three quarter inch oak that we're gonna use. You, uh, you put that on that line and then you mark the bottom and that tells you where the top of the subfloor is. So that means the floor is gonna sit on top of that subfloor. And there's a little paper, but it's not gonna make any real difference. And then you, uh, you take a piece, this is a, like a sliver of plywood that's three quarter inch. You put that on the next line and you mark the bottom and that tells you where the joist would be. Um, so that kind of lets you do the math going down. You're just subtracting. Uh, so the joist is where all these two by fours are gonna be cut to be that height. Um, and basically what that'll do is that will give me a nice solid uh, foundation. The, the two by fours are sitting directly on top of the actual physical joist below and they're screwed in and glued. So it's just like having the joist. Um, all the weight is transferred directly onto the joist, which is transferred directly to the, the center column or center joist and down into the columns. So you won't feel anything. It won't bounce or do anything weird. Um, here is how you calculate the uh, height of the top of the floor. So all I did is I went to where I have an existing floor on this side and you can see the line right there. It's pretty darn close, but a good way to test it Here's my favorite thing, ready, ET phone home. So as you put your finger on the bottom, I'm blocking it, you can see that the bottom of my finger is lit up, which means that it's right there on that line. Um, so that's how we're gonna do that, that we're gonna uh, basically, using those lines on the wall, um, we're gonna level everything else out in the room. Um, it's gonna work pretty good. Uh, one issue I'm gonna run into is when we get within three quarter inches of where the top of the floor is, that means that I have to stop the plywood. So um, I, I'll have to cut the plywood so that it, it doesn't go past that point. Otherwise it would start going uphill. I don't know if that makes a lot of sense right now, but it will in a little bit when you look at it. So that blue line I've drawn with chalk is basically where there's not enough gap to put plywood underneath that section of floor. So that means that the floor has less than three quarter inches between the bottom of the oak and what we have showing right now, this, this old subfloor. So that's where it's gonna get a little trickier. Um, probably what I'll do is I'm gonna order these carpet shims and I'm just gonna feather that out and smooth it out and uh, just sort of get to that point. Uh, I could sand it, I got a pretty powerful, um, you know, kind of, belt drive, drive sander to sort of sand some material and try to level it out. But I think I can do it with the carpet shims. That's kind of where sistering the joists might be a little bit easier because uh, you'd be able to take that into account as you go across the joists and you remove the floor and you sister them up. Um, so I don't know, I, that, that might be where the downfall is to this. Um, again, you know, it's kind of nice having the floor in here with people running around and stuff. And I, I think it's gonna work out. The one thing I'll say is putting in other floor uh, in other houses that I've worked on, um, it it's never perfectly level. I mean, there's always some variation. So when you put the oak three quarter inch flooring in, there's always gonna be a little bit of give and play about, you know, maybe it drops down an eighth of an inch or a quarter inch here and works up and people don't really feel it. 
um, it's there, but you know, and you kind of, you can sense it when you put the floor in, you're like, Oh wow, there's a little low spot over here. Um, but yeah, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, we'll post a video once we're done. I wanted to show last thing, how messed up the floor is. So that red line is where the floor should be. And the, you can see I left the three quarter inch floor on that side of the room still. So there's about a good two and a half to three inches of sag. That's a lot. That's a lot. Um, a few people are going to probably say, well, it's structurally unsound. Um, that's not really true because the, the house is now supported down the center. So uh, it's structurally stable where, where it's at. It'd be better if it wasn't like that. Um, but that's, uh, that's what you get in a couple hundred years. The house is going to sag and, and it wasn't until probably the sixties or seventies that somebody actually kind of recognized that and started putting in some big steel concrete filled posts. Uh, we put a couple more in because we added some, uh, we took some walls out. So we just reinforced directly underneath them to transfer the load without having to use any of the beam at all to transfer the load. Um, so the beams there. It's actually very stable. We've been watching it for a year or so, and there's been no variation at all. Um, so I think we're fine. I think it just, once we put this in, it'll be way different in this room because it's gonna come up on this wall a good three inches. Um, we also just checked, <laughs> make sure there's enough height on this wall, and, and there's plenty of height. It's not gonna be an issue, as well as checking the clearance on doorways. Uh, but yeah, it's gonna be kind of interesting to have the floor up uh, one nice thing is when you put things on the floor, they're not going to roll away. Or when you set up a dining room table, you, have to, you don't have to put shims all over the place. So yeah, uh, we'll do a video after we cut all these two by fours and kind of show where we're at. Thanks.